Okay, at your sketch, okay, doing my day over. Now I'm starting my day. <laughs> it's like, I got 15 minutes in, and it's just like, okay, by the time I get back there, like, it doesn't seem like it's taken me half an hour, but, but it's taken me half an hour. How did it take me half an hour when it doesn't feel like it's taken me half an hour? So, silver pellet away. So, I'm going to head back there again, take two, cut that tree up, do all the little things on the list. I think I'll save the beaver till last because I think I'm going to be walking in for that one. I definitely don't want to get that ATV stuck. It's a six-wheeler, right? Eh? And those things are, they're not that good in snow. Uh, they, I don't know why. You'd think they'd be amazing in snow, but they, they just seem to slip and slide and skid. I mean, you got big knobby tires on there. You'd think that'd be fine, but no, 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 no. So I'll leave that till the last. And uh, then what I'll do is I'll, uh, then what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll do all the sawing and all that stuff first. Then, Do this on, put the windshield washer fluid in her car. And then I just keep that on, on light, on light mode. I was just talking to the lady in the store there. And she was coming up from town last night when that when the storm hit. She said it started to, it snowed for a bit and then hail and she said, oh yeah, it wasn't fun at all. She said, couldn't tell where you were on the road at all. It's like, it's so dangerous driving in the wintertime. I, one nice thing about being, that sucks about being seasonal is you're always broke. But one nice thing is that you're not, tra like, the guys that have to travel at like 5 o'clock in the morning to town, like, the, even on the nice evening, like, like, you know, where there's no storm, we'll call that nice. It's just the roads are so frozen and icy and ah so dangerous danger danger yeah yeah I just saw a video about Steve Irwin and his kids he was it was that guy man that guy if, if there's a guy that can freaking bring a tear you know a tear to your heart it's that guy uh, what a likable character he was eh uh, Steve Irwin the, the crocodile hunter but a year I don't know how many years ago he, he was like they're like what's what's your dream and he says to see my kids basically get skilled enough to competently take over my business right and they, they, they're like they, you know they do like those kind of like uh, dreamy photos where you got somebody talking and there's like a little kind of like uh, looks like a dream thing up at the corner of another video footage and there's his two kids like you know, releasing a crocodile. <laughs> a crocodile like took off like a million miles an hour. Uh, he was doing a wheelie on his one takeoff. It was pretty funny. Uh, but anyway, there's his kids, his, his son and his daughter, you know, sitting on top of a crocodile about to let it go and back into the wild. And it's like, yeah, mission accomplished. <laughs> Me, I just want to get stuck on the road. My, my expectations are a lot lower. A lot lower. <laughs> I love that saying out of the movie Devil's Rejects. I keep my expectations low so I'm never disappointed. You'd be surprised how well that works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like, like I always expect things to... Oh, <laughs> he's out playing frisbee with the girl. That, little do that dog is so smart. The neighbor's dog is kind of stupid and gets lost all the time. He sends her out to go find her. <laughs> and bring her back. Well, it's a, it's a border collie, eh? Yeah, yeah. Um... But anyway, yeah, it's like, uh, I'm always expecting things to go wrong. That's why, I, like, you know, like, if you've ever saw, I, I mention it all the time, a movie called Catch-22 uh, with Richard Dreyfus, I think, uh, not Emilio Steffes' dad. What was his dad? Um, what the hell was his dad's name? It looks just like Emilio Steffes. Uh, what the hell was his dad? Not Sheen. Martin Jean, Martin Jean. I think he was in it. And uh, anyway, uh, it, it's like 
to me, that is like, that's life. Like that, that's, that's life. I have to watch that movie again, but I remember the first time I watched it, I was like, this is the weirdest freaking movie. It's like something good happens and something really bad happens. <laughs> it's like the monkey's paw, you know what I mean? Uh, like, I, 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 that's my new saying now. It's like when something goes right, it's like, oh, something good just happened. Okay, something bad's got to happen in a couple of days. Monkey's paw, there you go. So it does monkey's paw, you know, it's like a Murphy thing, right? You never heard the story of the monkey's paw. It's like, uh, it's like, it's this magic paw that when you get it, you can make a wish and you get exactly what you want, but at a cost. Like, you want to be a multi millionaire, uh, but then your uncle dies and like wills it to you. You know what I mean? Like, like that, that kind of stuff, right? Where it's like everything's tainted, you know? Uh, everything's tainted. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, me, no, my stuff is just foobered. <laughs> just plain foobered. But I couldn't find my chainsaw files, my raker gauge. So I don't know why I, I, I don't know what I did with that. I hope I didn't lose that. It's not like it's a lot to lose, but it's a pain in the ass to have to go get get more. Ooh. So I'm heading back there now again, and uh, take two will hopefully be a little bit more successful. Maybe I'll do the other stuff first, and then. Uh, but I want to get that tree out of the road. I don't think anybody be. Maybe I'll do the tree first, just that way. If somebody, because my luck, that's when somebody be coming up and then they'll be, they'll be yelling at my client and say, "Yeah, hey, why you got to get that tree out of the road? There, we can't get to our cottage. We drove all the way up from the town." And I'll be, I'm on it. <laughs> you know, try to keep everybody happy, eh? So, Boom. if you can, not always possible, but if you can, you try it. You just try it. So anyway, uh, yeah, so my next big venture is to just get the Christmas shopping done. And after that, uh, you know, I don't think I'll be taking the vehicle too far until I get better tires on it. Just the front tires, the back tires. You know, it's it's, a, it's where you're going to spin, right? So I'd like to put studded tires on this all around. Uh, it'd be just a dandy. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know how this thing's going to be in comparison to uh, the CRV. Because that thing was excellent in the winter. Like, that was, like, the ultimate winter vehicle, if you ask me. Like, it just never got stuck anywhere, even with bad tires. You know, it had spin a little bit, but, you know, it was all-wheel drive, too. Well, until I made it a two-wheel drive, because my hang bearing decided, wanted to put the drive shafts through the floor. <laughs> what the hell is that knocking sound? I thought there was, like, a branch or something stuck under my uh, car for about a week. And you're thunk, 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 thunk. every time, and the faster I go, the thunk, 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 thunk. it's like okay, there's there's something, there's something under there. So I'm like, what could it be? Then I thought, grab the, I grabbed the drive, the drive shafts, and I shook them for the all-wheel drive. And it's a like, clink, 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 clink. I was like, oh, it's about to come through the floor. So I drove it around another week, quite paranoid. But I was like, am I gonna die? Am I gonna die? Is it gonna come through the floor this time? It didn't. Is that Johnny? I don't know if that's John or not. Nope, nope. It's a big four. Not so sure who that is. So yeah, there was a little bit of scrap metal to grab at the corner there, but uh, I don't know if I'm going to grab it or not. It's it's at that time of the season where it's like either you know like right now I consider okay the metal unless it's somewhere we could back up into and like a garage or something like just load up. This time of year, it's no point in picking the stuff up as much you know like like if you can, you can still get to it pretty easy like now but another couple of snowfalls is like okay yeah everything's buried and it's just you know uh the trailer's dangerous like paul slipped in the trailer the last time and uh, he, he was he, he's still sore from it like he, he like he did a like a full charlie brown there both feet came out from underneath him there and that he was lying on the ground for a good five minutes i thought i was gonna have to take him to the hospital I'm like, did you break something? You know, like, you know, he's like, uh, I don't know yet. <laughs> I thought, and a couple of days later, he's Reg, man, I'm sore. He goes, my wrist is sore, and this is sore. He goes, so he thinks he pulls a few muscles for sure. And it usually takes a couple of days to really feel it. Like, you feel it right away, but then you, you know, you get so sore and stiff right after, right? So, so this time, I'm just going to do a good old fashioned stay at the top. I'm not going to mess up the road. I'll just let her know that's where I'll be parking for the remainder of the season. 
I wonder if that was the, the grader that did that, because usually the plow guy doesn't plow like that. Look at all the sand. Like they put down, but then again, maybe. Because you know, he definitely took back the, uh, the sandbanks a bit. All right, take two. Here we go.